something in the air, something off. The kids are trick-or-treating, people are going to costume parties, and you? Well, you're sitting in front of your computer listening to me talk about World of Warcraft. Now, that's scary. Well, let's at least make the best of it. Never mind the fact that this stuff is all over the internet, and you've probably seen it a thousand times before. But this is the top 10 spookiest, scariest spooks in World of Warcraft. Zombies. Not just any zombies though. Can you guess this location? Some of you may have said Westfall, and you'd be right. One of the more revolutionary things with the game at the time of its release were day and night cycles. The World of Warcraft is, well, a world. As described in their 2001 preview of the game, they wanted to make it seem like a world, and one of their main ways of doing that was to change it as time goes on. As the sun goes down and the skies darken, then the town of Moonbrook will stir something a bit more nefarious than some simple bandits. The vultures that normally reside in the graveyard outside of town take shelter as the undead rise from their graves and search for their next meal. This ghoulish transition isn't unique to Moonbrook, however. Located in the Silver Pine Forest, just outside of the Shadowfang Keep dungeon, is the Pyrewood Village. By day, a quiet town of villagers just going about their normal lives. However, as night turns... That's right, furries. If you dare to move forward, let's move on to number 9. find these guys hanging around in various zones in the game. In the appropriately named Deadwood Pass, which eventually held the Karazhan Raid, and also outside the Scarlet Crusade Stronghold in the Tearsfall Glades, you'd find the bodies of non-believers hanging in the trees as a word of warning for those who don't abide by the cult strictures. Rated T for Teen, or rather, terrifying. Your courage will fail. Your friends will abandon you. Death is close. No, that wasn't the voice in your head that you normally hear. That was the voice of the old god, Cthun. Housed in the ancient temple of Ankaraj lies the god of madness and chaos, and working your way through his minions, he'll periodically shit-talk you like a nine-year-old on Xbox Live, spooking unsuspecting raiders. You are weak. You are already dead. You betray your friends. I boned your mom. These whispers for a time were implemented into the popular add-on Deadly Boss Mods. If you were attacked while AFK, it would plug this line while you're all tapped you out in Wowhead or watching pornography. Die. And this caused many players to question their sanity, and countless threads were created searching for answers. It was eventually removed from the add-on, since it caused such a stir. The Old God isn't the only one with the bands, though. The Ashbringer, Alexandros Mograine, also has a lot to say. His death was marred with betrayal and desecration, having been stabbed in the back by his own son, with his own weapon even, the Ashbringer. This treachery cursed the blade, and Mograine himself was raised from the dead to serve in Kel'Thuzad's undead army. Players can obtain the Corrupted Ashbringer in the next Ramus Raid, and while equipped, you would periodically hear whispers from Mograine's lost soul. It 
puts the lotion on its skin. It's kind of funny. You murder some bunnies, make some clothing out of their hide, and no one bats an eye. But you make just one null tent made out of human skin, and everyone loses their crap. That's right. You know all of those null camps in the game? Look closely at their tents, and you'll uncover the shocking truth. You ever wonder what happens to the bodies of the low-level humans who fell victim to the mighty hogger? Bring companions and remind yourself that overconfidence is a slow and insidious killer. Patricide, the killing of one's own father. Preceding the events of World of Warcraft, there's a prince by the name of Arthas Menethil, the son of Tyrannus Menethil and heir to the throne. He was an ordained paladin in the Order of the Silver Hand and fought for justice and defended the weak. His story, however, was marred with heartbreak, madness, and betrayal. In his youth, he uncovered a plot by the dreadlord Malganus to turn the citizens of his hometown Stratholm into undead through the consumption of poisoned foodstuffs. He rushed back to the kingdom to warn them, but it was too late, and the entire city had to be purged. The citizens turned as he warned, and he and his paladins had the grisly task of massacring them. He was driven mad by the ordeal, and in a quest for revenge against Malganus, he uncovered the rune blade Frostmourne, the weapon of the ruler of all undead, the Lich King. He wielded the cursed blade to aid him in his quest for revenge, and was able to slay the Dreadlord in one-on-one -on -one combat. The victory, however, was hollow, as the last of his sanity slipped away, and the cursed sword took hold of him. Under the influence of Frostmourne and the Lich King, he slayed his companions and returned to the kingdom. The crowd rejoiced its champion as he walked through the halls leading to the throne room, showering him with rose petals and ringing the bells in celebration. The cheers of joy and admiration quickly turned to horror as he drove Frostmourne through his own father's heart and unleashed the undead upon his own people. They say the dead don't lie, and vestiges of the past can be found in game. In the Undercity, if one turns up their ambience to the max and listens very carefully, in the bell tower, you can still hear the joyous ringing marking the prince's return. In the hallway leading up to the throne room lay still the rose petals that once showered the prince. And, in the throne room, you can hear the dialogue between Arthas and his father, moments before he ruthlessly murdered him. forest, a place of tranquility, and caves that look like, uh, well hey, they always said that Azeroth was a female titan. Be careful though, this one is infested with critters. There are some really hard quests in there, so you better wear lots of protection. Anyways, the children of Goldshire. 
wandering about the forest, you can find six children, and that's Aaron, Cameron, Lisa, Jose, John, and Dana. They seem innocent enough, but looking closely, you'll notice that they walk in the pattern of a pentagram. And what's more, at 7 a.m. every single day, they'll make their way to this secluded house near Crystal Lake and begin their satanic ritual. If you turn your sound levels up, you'll hear spooky music, banshee screams, ghoul calls, all manner of demonic noises. Even Cthulhu joins in on the fun. You will die. And just as quick as they came, they disappear and begin the ritual again and again, every day at 7 a.m. But there lies more horror in the seemingly innocent zone. After a long day of questing, adventurers can take refuge in the town's inn, refresh on food, relax by the cozy fire. However, for one server in particular, you'll find a completely different experience. In the deepest depths of debauchery lies the Moonguard Goldshire Inn, where those who enter leave with trauma and sticky feet. Hmm, what's going on over here? Oh, good lord. Uh, sorry. They mean to interrupt. Let's just go over here. Ah! Truly, one of the most horrifying areas in the entire game. The next Ramus Raid, home of the Lich Lord, Kel'Thuzad, and all manner of undead necromancers, and abominations. In the room at the far end of the raid, locked behind an iron gate, lies the most gruesome and grotesque being of them all, waiting. You are too late! Stitched together from the corpses of women and children lies a creature named Thaddeus, an amalgamation of flesh made to serve the Lich King in death. This malformed atrocity serves as the prison for the souls of the victims of the Scourge, whom can be heard crying for a release into the afterlife. You know those cries that you hear throughout the raid? dark truth is that they come from the lost souls trapped within Thaddeus. These wails can be heard throughout the halls of the Ziggurat to horrify invading adventurers and to serve as a warning of a fate that they too may meet. Next, we have a room that's so dark and so messed up that it was never even meant to be seen by players. Hidden behind the unreleased Karazhan Raid and the Deadwind Pass are the Karazhan Crypts. These are locked behind an iron gate, barring players from entry, and only by purposefully dying and spirit resurrecting through the gate could you gain entry. Inside lays a huge labyrinth filled with tombs, bones, grave sites, and the deafening silence of the dead. A pile of bones marks the site of a cruel execution room. At the entrance of the crypt is a black hole whose bottom can be seen by the naked eye, and those unlucky enough to fall down, however, would find themselves in a room called the Pit of Criminals. Supposedly, the last guardian, Medivh, would use this well to execute lawbreakers, being forced to jump to their doom where their bodies were left to rot with the bones of those before them. Nonetheless, this method of execution paled in comparison to the room of upside-down sinners. Venturing further into the crypts, you'd happen upon a body of water. On the surface, the waters are calm and serene. However, in the depths... The Room of Upside Down Sinners is a second known execution chamber, purposed to end the lives of criminals, trespassers, or anyone deemed to be a sinner in Medivh's twisted madness. The bodies lay there still to this day, 
and the waters are forever calm and as silent as a grave. The only sound you hear are your own footsteps, and if you turn up your ambience enough, you'll hear that of a heartbeat. It grows louder and louder, climaxing in a room called the Slaw of Despair. Wait, D-I-S... Never mind. But venturing into the heart of the crypts, into the deepest pit, and listening closely. I have a small penis. Uh, <clears throat> well, never mind that. Well, what could possibly top that, you're wondering? What is the most petrifying, heinous, and terrifying thing in World of Warcraft? Once upon a time, a long time ago, a game was released. An MMORPG based off of the Warcraft series called World of Warcraft. You could pick nine different classes, adventure with your friends, and explore a massive virtual world. It took the world by storm. Players were sucked into their addiction and invested thousands and thousands of hours into this virtual world. A meaningful and rewarding loot system, a thriving community, a fun and chaotic PvP experience, a set of classes that are all unique from each other, and a challenging but rewarding rating scene. It redefined the MMO genre and quickly earned the praise and adoration of players worldwide. But as time moved on, players watched the game they loved and adored slowly being changed into something else. Dungeon Finder, Raid Finder, Heirlooms, Level Boosts, a third furry race. Basic core functions to the MMO genre were deemed by a few to be too time consuming or annoying, so slowly but surely Blizzard pandered to this audience and the game was changed into a slot machine roulette wheel loot casino with aspects of mobile gaming and even a cash shop. The game today holds a meager amount of subscribers compared to its glory days as players fled in horror of what it's become. <laughs> Farewell for now, mortals. We hope you enjoyed today's video. See you again. <laughs>